I hope the previous reflection examples were worthwhile to you. I think all too often books talk about reflection and talk about cool things you can do with it, but don't really give examples. I hope that was useful to you. That was one of the hardest things I had when learning reflection was just trying to say, well, when would I ever use this? So the type of programming I'm doing right now is just fine. Anyway, I'm going to do something that's actually quite useless, but I think it will be educational uh, for you to see uh, reflection at the extreme. Okay, just to give you an idea of what reflection can do. So if you're ever in a, in a situation you need to do some runtime or dynamic, either one, same word, for same two terms, same concept. If you need to do some dynamic discovery of your types, then go for it. I'm going to make a vector here. It's a lot like the vectors I'm making the game engine programming playlist, except I'm not going to stress the math of a vector in this playlist. I know it's C-sharp based, so don't stress that. I just need a class, and I think it's nice to have a vector that can store an X and a Y. Let's override to string to return an intuitive representation of our vector as a string. So let me X, and I probably should use a string builder here instead of using string concatenation, but that's not the point of this video. So we'll just use good old string concatenation. Man, this is tedious. Semicolon there. Let's make a vector here. Let's use C sharp's syntactical sugar for initializing an object's property properties. I'm gonna say new vector and we'll say X gets four, <coughs> Y gets nine, like so, and then console right line vec dot two string Control F5. This looks pretty good, I think. X is 4, Y is 9. I technically do not need to call two string here. I could just rely on the overload of console right line. Wow, there's a lot of them here to avoid boxing. Uh, but one of them takes an object, if I can find it. Maybe I already passed it. One of these overloads takes an object, and in that case, it'll just call two string on the target type. But to flavor this example up a little bit, I. I'm going to call two string explicitly, and you can see we get our nice string representation. All right, so what I'm going to do next is write some code that will do all of this via reflection. Okay, kind of pointless, but it will drive in the idea that hey, we can we can be pretty dynamic here. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to say type vec type gets type of vector type of is a compile time operation that returns the type object of whatever type you pass here I know it doesn't look like an operator we're generally used to operators being plus or minus or multiply or maybe even dot in some cases but type of is an operator and I th the difference between type of and get type I could say uh, I could say vec dot get type and that does the exact same thing because the type of vec is a vector, except this is a runtime evaluation instead of a compile time one. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Let's type a vector. And next thing we need to do is instantiate a vector. So I'll say vector vec2 parallel with vec here gets activator. Please create me an instance of my vec type. All right, create instance has 15 overloads. One of these will be for a type. Oh, it's the second one in. So that'll create our vector instance. But create instance, it returns an object. Compile time type is object, so I have to cast it to a vector. So this is our new. Okay, this instantiates our vector. All right. Now let's get down. I'm actually going to expand this code out. Remember the this is not native .NET. .NET cannot do that natively. The C# -sharp compiler just turns around and says, "Oh, you want X to be four and Y to be nine. I'll rewrite this for you. Control X, get rid of the curlies. Print, print. Vec dot. Oh, I can't remember what I did. Vec dot X gets four. Vec dot Y gets nine. And, and that's all the compiler literally does. So that should hopefully. Help us do what we're about to do down here. Let's t turn your resolution up to high definition if, if necessary so you can see what I'm doing here. We've created our instance. That's our new. Now we need to set these properties. Well, property 
info, control dot, get the using in here, hit enter, using system dot reflection. Property info is an object that tells us all about the property, or all about one property of a given type. All right, so I'll say uh, prop info gets vec type. Please go get me the property with the name X. All right, and that's, there we go. We now have the X property. In fact, I'll call this X, control shift U to uppercase that P. X prop info, and then same thing here. Property info, Y prop info gets vec type dot, hey, give me the property named Y, like so. Now I can use these two property infos to set the values of X and Y like we did directly here, but we're going to do it indirectly. I can use these property infos to set X to 4 and Y to 9 on this vec2. So let's do that. X prop info dot set value on vec2. I want the value to be a a four, that's for the X property. And then this is for indexers. If you remember, we have the indexers. I really think they should have defaulted this value to something. But we have to pass pass arguments there. If we're doing an indexer property, but we're not doing an indexer property. In fact, most of the properties I do are not indexers. If you want to learn about indexers, go watch the videos on that. So here we go. We just set the X property to four. Y prop info dot set value. You can probably see this coming a mile away. We'll set it to, what did we do? We did a 9 up here, so set it to 9, and then null for that argument. And I think we're good. Now we need to call to string so that we can send that st string result to console write line. So we're going to need a method info this time. Method, method info, to string info gets vec type. Dot, hey, go give me the method whose name is toString, like that. And I can say, hey, toString info dot invoke. Let's invoke that, that toString method. Let's invoke it on vec2. And the parameters, well, toString doesn't take any parameters, so we'll pass null there. And then the invoke returns, look again, it's a compile time type of object. We know it's a string, so we will do a cast to a string and then store that uh, in a string like so. Okay, and then down here, oh, well, in order to call console write line, we're going to have to get a method info for console write line. Oh, look at all this reflection we're doing. So, again, method info, uh, write line info gets type of console. Console's a type. Hey, go give me the method called write line. But there's several versions of right line, is there not? I already scrolled through them. If I go up and down here, you can see all these overloads. So we have to be more specific. In fact, if we're not specific, and it'll throw an exception at us saying, I don't know what to do. So let's look here. Ooh, here's the string, the name of the method, the name's right line. And then the type array is the types of the arguments. Right, and in array order. So if I had a, a method that took three arguments and it was int char int, I'd have to pass the type info for int char int in an array right there. But console write line, the one we're using just takes a string. So I'm going to say new array type of string. Okay, I want the version that uh, that takes one string argument. Look at this. This dynamicness here. We're doing all this dynamically. And if I screw anything up in here, which chances are I might have, we'll see when I run it. If I screw up anything, you know, maybe I say, I don't know, type of uh, main class here or something where there's not an overload, then we'll get an error at runtime because it's trying to bind at runtime. We call that late binding when we try to do all this at runtime. Let's let's see if we can invoke this now. Write line info dot invoke. Uh, null for the object because write line is a static method. We call write line directly on the class name. So no object there. It's a lot like delegates when delegates are referencing methods. You can go watch the videos on that. And then the parameters, new array, new array. Uh, what's the parameter? We're going to pass the result here. That's the string result we're passing to write line. Control F5. Hey, look at that. It ran. Not too often I write that much code and it actually works the first time. I 
am feeling pretty good. Here's the right line for this one, and then look at all this reflection, this dynamicness we've done uh, to, to get this one here. Okay, now in the next video, I'm going to do a little bit of wrap-up on this. I'm going to show you some... Uh, I'm going to point out a few important things to notice about this example, but it's going to take a little longer than I'd like to in this video. So we'll do it in the next video. Uh, but one thing I want you to notice is, hey, we can do everything dynamically. I hope you don't start writing your code like this instead of writing your code like this. This is hideous. Okay, but you can do this if you need to do some dynamicness discovery of types at runtime. And sometimes it's necessary, boom, you've got reflection to do so.